when you strike out on your own, if this is at all appealing to you, um, what I like to do is find two symbols that are pretty highly correlated. And if everybody understands what correlation is, that's great, but uh, let me just uh, define it quickly. It, it, the correlation measures the relationship of the, of the movement between two things, in this case, two stocks. In other words, does, if a correlation would be a perfect one if every time Hewlett Packard went up, Dell went up also. Um, let me let me show you, Matthew, if I can, how to calculate or how to see the correlation between two stocks. If you just type in um, HPQ on that chart, just type in Hewlett Packard. Thank you very much. And Matthew, thank you very much for, for walking through all this stuff here. Um, if you go to uh, the edit studies button, um, just click on uh, edit studies over on the right hand side, actually. And just to the left is the fast way of doing it. You go to edit studies, and there's that little icon that looks like that little thing on the left there. But if you go down to correlation now, and the available studies, go down to correlation. There it is. And click once on correlation, please. Or double click on correlation, please. See where it says correlation SPX? Well, by default, we give you the correlation between the symbol, in this case Hewlett Packard, and the SPX. What I want you to do is go over to correlation with security down in the study properties and type in Dell, E L, D E L L. Uh, and then for a think, let's just for the sake of argument choose uh, choose 30. 30 the hours is what we're going to look at. And then hit apply down to the bottom. Okay. And then okay. <laughs> study down at the bottom there is going to be the correlation of the price movements between Dell and Hewlett Packard over the pre using 30 hours worth of data. In other words, 30 hourly bars. And you can change that number of bars um, depending on, on what correlation you want to see. The I like to see correlations pretty steadily above 80% for good pairs. Um, this one dips down to zero. It never goes negative, which is which is a good sign, although a negative correlation doesn't really, you know, doesn't kill a pair straight either. It shows you there's a strong negative correlation for that, for that pair. It might actually um, give you some good opportunities as well. But what I like to see is a pretty steady positive correlation. Here it oscillates around, and you know you can experiment with different time frames. Um, but typically, if you go, let's say, 10 bars, 20 bars, 30 bars, or 20, 30, 40, you should probably see similar correlations, um, and it should be pretty stable. I like nice, stable correlations. I don't like to be surprised when, and the surprises happen when the correlations break down. That is, when the correlation goes from, let's say, 80% down to negative 20%. Oh, great. That means, you know, my my Dell is, I, I you know, I thought Dell would underperform Hewlett Packard. Well, now Dell is rallying and HPQ is dropping. Great. Okay, that stinks. Um, I hate that. So I like to see pretty consistent positive correlations. Um, this is okay. You know, this is, this is a, an okay correlation. I wouldn't... Um, at the ranch in this Hewlett Packard Dell trade, but it's not bad if you're just kind of working with it. Um, we do any number of things. You can type in, let's go, you know, let's do an example of M and X. I'll show you a high correlation. Let's just type in M and X in the upper, upper uh, part there and hit uh, enter. And then let's go back to uh, studies, edit studies, and then change it, change it to the spiders, for example. And we'll see if the correlation is 30 is fine, 30 is fine, and hit OK. And there, it's again a pretty steady correlation. You know, recently it's been about 75 or so. It's dipped down, but it's pretty, holds pretty steady. That, there's a pretty strong correlation amongst the big U.S. stock indices. So if you're looking at, let's say, spiders um, and MNX, you're going to see a pretty strong positive correlation. Um, but I will say that the the index pairs trades that you might see are are tend to be a little bit longer.
short-term trades. Some of the trades that I kind of, let me show you an example of how I would look for a, a pairs trade in the energy sector, okay? Let's say, you know, the big sort of consolidated oil company like Conoco, Phillips, or Exxon, or something like that. What I like to do is go to, and I, let's stop for a second and say, well, how do I find other stocks in a sector, okay? What I like to do is go to the um, quote tab. There you go. And if you click on that, um, uh, let's see. If you click on where it says, um, in your case, it says symbol. Click the click the little gray dot to the left of symbol, and click on customize. Go to customize. What you can do is if you scroll down, scroll down and select, um, sure it says industry division, industry sector, industry group up a little bit. Um, you click on industry division and add it in, hit the green arrow, and then industry sector and hit the green arrow industry group and hit the green arrow and what we can do to actually see we can take out the uh, 52 week high and low and maybe some of the like the bid size and ask size and stuff like that if you click on those things the red arrow it'll take them out and then bid size ask size I'm just thinking things you can take out to save some room on your page uh, hit okay All right, it's gets all cramped over in the left hand, the right hand side. Excuse me. We can, um, uh, you know, shrink some of the columns if you need to. But here's what I want you to do. Uh, down below there, just type in a symbol um, Exxon Mobil, XOM, for example. So what we see is that in the it's in the industrial sector. If you put on the right hand side, what I'm going to show you is how to find all this stuff in the watch tab. But this is the way it works. So it's under manufacturing, and then what's the next one? What's the in, in petroleum refining, and then what's the industry group? It's under petroleum refining. So go to the watch tab, and the watch tab is that funny little uh, green icon up in the upper right-hand corner right there. Okay? And so how do we find stocks in the same industry sector as ExxonMobil? Let's go to the index watch section. Index watch, and then we go to uh, select watch list to the right, just right there, perfect, and then go to industry, go down to industry, perfect, and then go to manufacturing, and then in the sub menu you go to um, where is petroleum refining and related industries, right there, and then petroleum refining, right below there, and hit enter. And there we have about 41 stocks. Realistically, it's a lot less than that. But it's a bunch of stocks in that sector. So we have, for example, we have uh, BP, British Petroleum. We have COP, Conoco Phillips. We have CVX, which is Chevron. We have um, XOM, and there's number 40. We have um, WNR. We have Sun uh, Sunoco. We have a bunch of different stocks that we can look at in that sector, okay, that probably have decent correlations. In other words, let's put it this way. When ExxonMobil makes money, chances are Sunoco and Chevron are also making money. ConocoPhillips is also going to make money. You know, everybody's making money off of $4 gasoline except, except me, okay?